As I said earlier, a very happy Thanksgiving to you. It's interesting that we do have church services on a Wednesday Eve as we get ready for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving really is nowhere on the church's worship calendar. It's not a religious holiday. It's not an event in which we celebrate the life of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. It's um, we ga- aren't gathering together to begin a spiritual journey like you do on Ash Wednesday for 40 days. What actually brings us together is it's the eve of a national holiday, a national holiday we call Thanksgiving. It began in colonial times from the earliest times as a harvest festival. In 1621, Governor William Bradford of Massachusetts of pilgrim fame, first declared a day of thanksgiving and prayer to God for the harvest. It soon became a custom throughout the American colonies. However, following the revolution, an annual day of thanksgiving was then sanctioned by the federal government. Listen to the words of what George Washington used to proclaim this national holiday. He writes, where it's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and to humbly implore his protection and favor, and whereas both the houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and singular favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend next to be devoted by the people of the states to the services of that great and glorious being who is the benevolent beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, and that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks. Can you believe it? The two houses of Congress agreed with the president. I hope and pray we could today too. That's how the National Day of Thanksgiving actually begin, began. I think about it for you. What is um, tomorrow really going to be? Well, for many, it's a national holiday. For many, it's a day off work. For some, it's the day before Black Friday. Ooh, you know, you can even get started earlier. Sometimes, I think in our culture, we don't even acknowledge the original purpose that's inherent in the day uh, we call Thanksgiving Day. It's been replaced by the more non-offensive Turkey Day. Or, interesting one I've noticed, Friendsgiving. Friendsgiving, you've been seeing that trending on Apple News quite a bit. But today, you and I have come with the intention of our founders into this place of worship to do just what this building has been set aside for. We're here to worship our Lord, and to give him thanks for the many blessings that he has given us. For as Christians, we've been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. We've experienced his redeeming grace and the forgiveness of our sins, and we really don't need a day or an occasion, per se, to remind us to give thanks to God. It should just be a natural part of our daily life. You see, saying thanks isn't just good manners that you learned from your mom and your dad when you were younger. It truly is a part of our faith. Luther actually said, worship could be summarized in just one word, gratitude. Giving thanks, gratitude. Thanksgiving is also the time that we start watching Christmas movies, right? Or have some of you already been cheating on that a little bit? If you've seen the movie 
Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Um, you know that film is filled with all kinds of beautiful little gems about life and faith. And one such gem actually occurs early in the movie. Scott Calvin finds himself at Santa's workshop after his first night delivering presents. He's skeptical, to say at least, at what he sees. And in his struggle about this craziness going on with Santa, he says, what if I don't believe? And Judy, one of the elves, replies, you don't get it. Seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. I think about that. What a great line. Believing is seeing. Believing, seeing, giving thanks. It's all what our gospel story is about today. That story of the ten lepers. You know the story well. Ten lepers, um, they see Jesus coming. They cry out, Lord, have mercy on us. And Jesus commends them for their faith, and he says, Go show the priest, as was prescribed in the Old Testament, the way to be cleansed of leprosy. And as they went, they were healed. You can only imagine uh, the excitement that was there as they were going, and they did as they were told. But one of them decided not to go back to the priest, but instead turned around and came back to Jesus. He happened to be a Samaritan. He came back to give thanks. The question before us is why did this leper act differently than the other nine? I don't think it was particularly because he was a Samaritan, although it really does give a picture of Jesus uh, Jesus being savior not just for a particular people, the Jews, but for the whole world. Yes, he was a Samaritan, but that wouldn't have caused him necessarily to act differently. The element that made the Samaritan act differently was that he saw what had happened, and he also saw beyond what had happened. Kind of the big story behind the little story. It wasn't just that the tenth leper just happened to have better manners than the others. Jesus asked him when he returns. He says, weren't all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? I don't know if you caught it. Honestly, it's probably the first time I really caught it in this story that Jesus said he returned to come and to give praise to God. That man who was standing before him, that man who turned his life around, That man who cleansed him of a disease that ultimately would end in his death and had already resulted in his separation from other people, a disease sort of like our sin also, he returned and gave praise to God, God himself, in the person of the second person of the Trinity, Jesus the Son of God. And Jesus then tells him to rise, to get up off of his knees where he is worshiping, thanking Jesus. As I said, worship and thanks, really gratitude go hand in hand. And he says, go. Your faith, your faith has made you well. You see, you and I as followers of Jesus Christ see life, or at least we're invited to see life, from a different perspective. We live differently because we see differently. The Samaritan leper saw his healing as a gift from God. 
And because he had received a great gift, he was also able to give a greater gift to see Jesus Christ as his not only physical healer, but as his Savior. And to bow down and to give him praise and worship. That's why he bowed down. That's why he worshiped. And that's why he left completely healed. Because he had met Jesus, the Son of God. A central belief to the Christian faith is that the God whom we worship is the creator of all things. We're going to confess that in just a minute. Because of this, everything belongs to God. And so today it's right to give him thanks and praise. God graciously shares his abundance with us. And as Americans, you and I have been so blessed. Blessed beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Another core belief that we have as followers of Jesus Christ is that we live in the palm of his hand. These two truths enable Christians to see the world differently. They allow us to cultivate a life of contentment, gratitude, thanksgiving, seeing God behind all kinds of circumstances, even the ones sometimes that are a little challenging. Because we hold on to the promise of our Savior who says, I am will be with you always. Because, like the leper, Jesus has revealed himself to us. He'll do it in a very special way today as we come to this table, as we receive our healing from our sins, that forgiveness that he gives, that he won for us on the cross, that he proved at his resurrection, that power to change lives to give life the promise of his presence. And for that healing, cleansing, salvation that only he can give, it is our duty to give him thanks and praise and to serve and obey him. And for those of you who are, grew up Lutheran, you know how to end this. This is most certainly true. Amen. 